The largest battery ever is under our feet. Subsurface storage of renewable energy. So it goes inside and then see. Ah, I see. So over here we, uh, we have the microchip. Therefore here at TU Delft researchers are investigating the earth as a storage facility. So we are trying to come up with our simulation what are the best operating conditions to make sure it is safe to store. Welcome to the Edmar Research Programme. But first, why should we rely on the process of so-called power to gas? Why do we need molecules to store renewable energy? To solve the challenge of renewable energy storage, we cannot only rely on electrical-based batteries. Electric-based batteries would cover the range of around 100 kilowatt hour. For the country Netherlands, we need 800 terawatt hour of energy, which would be equivalent to 8 billion of these electric-based batteries. That's why we look into alternative options, especially hydrogen, which allows us to store larger-scale terawatt hour of energy. In order for hydrogen to be used on a massive scale, there is one major issue that needs to be addressed. Giant spaces are required to store the gas, but where do we find them? Reservoirs, uh, geological reservoirs or solution mine caverns are actually beneath our feet. And you can see there are plenty of opportunities in the North Sea area to develop them further. We have a few already operational, but more to scale up to allow hydrogen economy to be fully deployed. So we will envision plenty of them to be developed below the North Sea and also onshore and offshore as well. Porous rocks, uh, depleted gas reservoirs and also salt caverns here. So there will be a lot of options to exploit for green hydrogen storage. To fully understand, we must literally dive deeper into the matter and try to visualize this. Imagine a whole chain from green hydrogen production to transport to consumption. On our seas and oceans, many thousands of wind turbines generate green electricity. Which will be converted to green hydrogen with these huge electrolyzers. The green hydrogen can be stored in large quantities in depleted gas reservoirs and salt caverns. With our research team, we study how we can store this hydrogen in a safe and efficient way in these reservoirs. That's why today we are invited in the Admire Hydrogen Lab at the Department of Geoscience and Engineering at TU Delft. So we, we carried out uh, experiments in the lab and one of the things that we look at is how hydrogen and water and rock interact with each other. Depleted gas reservoirs in fact are filled with porous rock, sandstone that behaves like a sponge when hydrogen over and over is pushed into it and pumped out. So this is, uh, this is the exact same uh, rock core that we have inside this core holder right now. So this is a Berea, Berea sandstone. So here you can see that there's a, a porous uh, rock. So we start with 100% uh, with water and then we uh, slowly increase the amount of uh, hydrogen that we inject in through this core. At every stage we uh, take scans with the medical CT scanner and we visualize uh, where the hydrogen is in this, uh, in this roll core. So we look how uh, easy it is for hydrogen to flow through the, through the reservoir and what we found with our research is that the hydrogen uh, brine rock system is, is uh, water wet, uh, which means that uh, it will be uh, easy for, for hydrogen to flow through this reservoir, which is good because that means that it's easy to inject, but also easy to get the hydrogen out of the reservoir again. Uh, so that's uh, what we need, of course, because when you store the hydrogen, you also want to be able to get it out of the reservoir. Salt caverns are large empty spaces with a layer of thick brine on the bottom. The shield can be strong as a tank, but are we sure? Uh, the thing is we are dealing with uh, underground fractures, so it's not like uh, only one fracture here. We have a massive number of fractures, so let's say I would expect you may face a thousand of fractures sometimes. And now you all want to know how these a thousand of fractures would propagate. My main research topic is trying to understand the effect of cyclic loading of hydrogen 
in the subsurface. So I'm trying to see the geomechanical perspective of it, trying to see what happens if there is uh, certain operating conditions we choose and then we are trying to avoid let's say seismicity or fractures propagation of fractures growth so may, basically to understand or let's say to do a safety analysis of the hydrogen storage in simulation I'm uh, doing a microfluidic experiment um, we have a microchip in here under the microscope and what we do is that we inject hydrogen in there to look how the hydrogen will behave in such a chip. So at this moment the channels are filled mostly with water, that is what you can see over here, but then there's also hydrogen in the chip at the moment, and that's what you can see with the darker lines. So when we would do an experiment, we would see this all moving, and then we could analyze the behavior of the hydrogen in combination with the water. So when we would inject hydrogen in a reservoir, we would uh, sometimes inject it into a porous rock. And inside that porous rock, there are many, many small channels. And those channels are actually in the range of the channels that we have inside our microchip. So uh, we need to know how the hydrogen will move through that reservoir. And uh, yeah, to get to know that behavior, we have these chips and we can see the behavior in different types of channel widths. The challenge is to store the hydrogen in a safe way and to keep the gas as pure as possible. And we did some simulation and very fortunately we found that even with this injection and production cyclicity effect of hydrogen injection, we found that even we are doing a lot of cyclicity uh, operations here, the amount of trapment of hydrogen is very, very uh, little. So it's a promising uh, result that shows okay, there are not a lot of trapment happening there. Actually, I'm so happy because uh, what we are doing here is, I can say, is one of the uh, first experimental work uh, in the world for hydrogen. So I'm completely proud of that because uh, when we are filling the gap of our knowledge to this uh, energy transition, every step, every uh, thing that we can do is uh, helpful. Admire is a science lab for the safest, largest and most efficient battery for renewable energy. The Admire project is primarily funded by the Dutch National Science Foundation under VD scheme and also we have industrial partners Chevron, Shell and Schellenberger to utilize our science and deploy the science in the, in the society. Will science deliver in time on the energy transition, which is so urgently needed? If we prioritize science, research and education in universities to deliver energy transition in time, we will certainly make it. Seeing the reality, seeing the new generation, enthusiasm, energy that they bring and the will that they want to prioritize this move and the concerns they have about the climate and energy transition, I'm quite certain that we will deliver the science in time.